Hey everyone, this is Sidewinder from Sidewinder Makes. I get a lot of questions from people asking how I turn a raw 3D printed prop, such as this mask on the left, into a fully finished and wearable piece, like this one on the right. So I thought I'd make a quick guide covering the process I use. The first thing you're going to need is the 3D print. I chose this Shy Guy mask because I think it's a good project for people just getting into 3D printed props. It's got a simple shape and isn't too complicated overall. Now, I'll have a link for the print files down in the description for those who would like to print this themselves. Or you can head it over to my store on Etsy where I sell both raw and finished versions of these masks. So let's have a quick look at the print first. I printed this off at about a 0.15mm layer height. It takes a little bit longer than the standard height, but it saves a lot of trouble that you might run into if you're printing it thicker. For one, it helps make sure that there are less weak points on the print, from areas that might not successfully connect and cause the stringing effect as seen here. Additionally, since the layers are smaller, it makes it easier to sand, which is the key to making the mask look nice and smooth. So the first step would be to clean up any burrs or rough spots on your print. Most of this can be done with a pair of snippers such as these. You may find some looser hanging pieces around the underside of the mask. It's typically between the space and the eyes. This is normal since the mask is printed without supports. Just trim these away as you see fit, but I recommend only trimming the loose ones. If you've bought one of my raw prints, this step has probably already been taken care of for you, so you won't have to worry about it as much. Next we move on to our first stage of sanding. Primarily, I like to use 220 grit and 500 grit sandpaper for the majority of this. By the way, I'll be sure to have a list of all the materials and tools I use in this video, along with links as to where you can find them. Optionally, you can use something like this rubber sanding block to help you with knocking down high-rise areas, like around the nose. Just be careful not to crack the mask in the process. Too much pressure and you may warp it, or flat out break it. They're pretty sturdy though, so I've never had this happen to me. So when you're sanding, I recommend focusing on a few major areas. Specifically, this seam here, and the bridge of the nose, as mentioned before. This is most likely where you're going to spend the majority of your time. Sanding against the grain of the print is probably the best way to knock lines down quickly. Be sure to round off sharp areas, such as the inside of the eyes, mouth, around the mask, and the strap holes. Having rounded edges makes this thing a lot more comfortable to wear, and cleaner looking. Use your lower grit sandpaper for removing the majority of plastic, and your higher grit as more of a finisher to smooth your mask. Be sure to sand somewhere you're not too worried about covering in dust. Outside is always a good choice. When you're finished sanding, your mask should look a little something like this. Those high rises on the nose are now nice and level, and all the sharp areas are gone. You may notice, however, that if you were to run your nail over the mask, it still makes a bit of a scratching sound, meaning that it's not completely smooth. That's where the next step comes in. Go ahead and get yourself some spray primer. I typically use this Rust-Oleum Flat Gray since it's really good at revealing any mistakes you may have missed. Alternatively, you can find something called a filler primer. It's pretty much the same thing, except it has a high buildup formula, which is good for filling out small holes and gaps in the print. Either will work just fine. Make sure your mask is clean before priming. You can wash it off in the sink and let it dry, or brush off the dust. If you do wash your mask, make sure to let it completely dry. Pay special attention to the instructions of the paints and primers you use, and spray in a well-ventilated area such as outside. Personally, I spray on a small wooden stake in my backyard, away from the house where there is a little wind. When applying your primer, do so in light coats. About two to three should be good for the first set. Apply coats a few minutes apart to avoid running or paint drips. An important note about 3D prints, uh, don't leave them exposed in the sun for a long period of time, especially when priming or painting with dark colors. The dark color absorbs heat, and when the mask sits out in the sun, you wind up with warping such as this. It's rather hard to completely fix, and pretty much ruins your entire print. So it might be a better idea to do all of your painting in a shaded area. When you're done priming, your mask should look something close to this. I tend to let my primer dry for at least four hours before doing anything else to it. Notice how gaps are a lot more visible, and the rings around the nose have returned. That's where we move on to the next part, which is, you guessed it, more sanding. But this time around, let's try out a technique called wet sanding. If you were to just try and sand your primer like normal, it's going to kick up a lot of dust and really clog up your sandpaper, which could put deep gouges into your print. To avoid this, find a bowl, bucket, or old pot to fill with water. 
Dip your sandpaper into the water and sand like normal. This keeps the dust from getting everywhere and allows for a cleaner finish. Occasionally wipe your mask dry with a shop towel or a rag to check where you need to keep sanding. To clean your sandpaper, just dunk it back into the water. You can also get a wire brush like this one to help. I recommend laying a towel or something down when you do this because you'll have a lot of paint water dripping everywhere. Maybe wear some old clothes too. When you're done wet sanding, your mask should look a lot smoother. If you still notice some spots or holes that need filling, repeat the priming and wet sanding process again. You can focus on applying a little extra primer to these areas if you want, just be careful not to make more work for yourself. Thicker paint takes longer to dry, so keep that in mind as well. With our masks fully smoothed out, it's time to paint. I use an ultra matte white spray paint for a nice even finish that can be cleaned easily. You can even hand paint your mask if you'd like, but it probably wouldn't be as smooth looking, which kind of defeats the purpose. Apply your paint in thin coats to ensure an even look. If you mess up here, you're going to have to go back to sanding again. When you're happy with how this looks, let it dry for a full 24 hours before moving on to the next step. Now it's time to make our mask wearable. For this part, all you'll need is a needle, thread, a roll of 1 inch elastic, and a plastic sliding buckle, also 1 inch. You may also want a lighter, though it's optional. Cut your elastic into two parts, one for each strap hole. I typically cut the lengths at 10 inches and 14 inches when making masks, to allow for plenty of adjustment. With your lighter, run the flame over the ends of your elastic bands to melt the fibers together. This helps to keep the ends from fraying. Now on to sewing. I recommend laying down something like an old t-shirt or a tissue for the front of your mask to rest on while working on it. This way it doesn't get scratched or damaged. Go ahead and take one of the straps you cut and put it through the hole of your mask. Make sure the shorter tab is on the inside. Now sew the tab to the strap. Do the same for your other strap on the opposite side. Then sew your buckle to whichever strap is shorter. Make sure it's facing the proper way. It's all pretty simple, but it can get a bit tedious. Your strap should look something like this when you're finished. Now it's time to make our eye holes. I use a stretchy black t-shirt material for this, but you can use sheer fabric if you want something thinner. You'll notice that as I stretch the fabric, you can clearly see any light coming through it. So you'll be able to see out of your mask, but no one will be able to see in. Cut two rectangles out to fit over each of your eye holes. Make sure they're big enough, about 5 inches by 3 inches should be fine. Take a hot glue gun and tack one of your pieces right above the eye hole. This will make it easier to stretch it out and shape it without moving. Make a ring of hot glue around the eye, being sure not to be too close to the edge. Now quickly and carefully take your fabric and set it into place, being sure to stretch outwards in a circular motion. If done properly, you should have a nice visibility and the front should look clean with no glue smears. To clean up the interior, take an X-Acto knife for a pair of scissors and trim away the excess fabric around your glue. I used an X-Acto knife here, but scissors are a lot easier. With your scrap fabric removed, take your hot glue gun and add another ring around the edge of your fabric, cementing it into place. This makes sure it won't peel away. Do the same for the other eye, as well as the mouth hole. Our mask is just about done, though it's not exactly comfortable to wear just yet. To make for a better fit, take some upholstery foam to act as padding. Cut it into rectangles that can be fit in at the cheeks and forehead of your mask, as shown in this diagram. Hot glue them into place and hold each piece until they're set. Foam acts as an insulator, so it'll take a little longer for the hot glue to cool down. And with that, our mask is now complete. You can even take it a step further by doing custom colors or adding stuff like leather straps, all of which are options available in my shop. And these techniques can be applied to just about any 3D printed prop you want to make. And that's about it for this tutorial. If you want to see more of my work, find me on social media. I post projects I'm working on like props, costumes, and digital art. If you have any idea for something you'd like to see me make, let me know in the comments. If you're interested in commissioning me for a project, shoot me an email or message me over Etsy, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching, and have a good one. Thank you.